Hey, how is everybody doing out there in 2023? This is Cat Makeup 3 talking to you after I got what's called a uh, version of the big V. Uh, meaning I came down with something and it took me three days to get over it. Essentially, I woke up at 3 a.m. with a uh, splitting headache and then I had a hot body temperature wise. And then uh, what happened was it took me three days for that thing to abate. And I discovered colloidal silver is the way to go. Let me show you what that is. I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice, but this saved my life right here. So I recommend it. Um, you just read the bottle and decide. So today was my first day up as a human. Actually, I'm fixing my hair right now. Uh, my first day is a human amongst the living um, and I had to open up my calendar as far as clear it because I take clients um, and I, I had to like say we're clearing it until the 21st because that's the most responsible thing to do but uh, today I felt well enough to get a beer <laughs> And I started listening to some of my videos and I'm um, watching the one. Okay. If you go to my channel after you listen to this or even before you finish, click on cat, right? My little icon down there and then go to uh, my channel and then go to most popular videos and go to like uh, penis size and modern art. <laughs> oh man. So one of the things I want to tell you is that my guy, my guy, my guy is the term I use for this man uh, that I saw for a good many years, uh, about a cumulative of a decade. And uh, he actually was highly dysfunctional, very toxic, awful for me. But because of my own blindness uh, to that sort of uh, being an addiction that I had due to my childhood conditioning, because my mother um, mirrored that adrenal rush uh, and the spankings I would get from my dad upon her demand was the only attention I got from my father so a violent not a violent strictly violent like a um, like whip you and beat you but uh, having t being taken by by a, this incredible force that was a rush for me and I realized that was an addiction and I found that out uh, in 2021 I split from this man because he was increasingly abusive. Every time you leave an abuser and then you go back to him, he'll hoover you back. That's what narcissists do. And they'll, t they'll do what's called future faking. They'll say, oh, you know, you're right. I've been drinking too much. I, I'm gonna go by your lead. Um, keep, we'll keep each other accountable. And I was like, sure, okay. And of course he was never accountable. And so, um, at the end of 2021, I'd had enough of his um, future faking, lying, abuse, neglect, disrespect, p smear campaign behind my back, um, and sex by force that wasn't any good anymore because he's he's like his mid 60s. Ugh. And if you're a healthy man in your mid 60s and you love your lady, yeah. But no, he was gross, disgusting. Took up smoking uh, because for some stupid reason in his head and um, wouldn't uh, uh, ever meet my needs in any way, shape, or form. We could never make any plans. We could never have a conversation. Why was I with him? I'm telling you, because of my fucked up childhood. So when I keep talking about my guy, my guy, my guy, and my videos in the past, uh, I was, you could see it, noticeably like still addicted, so totally, totally into him. And I was, I liked the sex. And he was still delivering, I guess. Um, but I also make a great fantasies in my head and I'm learning how to be a realist and to understand reality. Not understand it, but to really be aware of what reality really is. It doesn't mean, you know, when you're making love, you don't have a beautiful scenario going on in your head, but if you have to always make up stories in your head, I always had to make up stories in my head and I would rather just be 
in the sensation or like have the man actually be sensuous and masculine yet also um, slow like like your body is an instrument and they're playing it that would be love making and towards the end the the ex who was not the ex my guy he i would say listen you know we need to take it slower you're rushing into things i need an opportunity to warm up you're not letting the wheels get greased if you know what i mean <laughs> he was pushy um, he had had a series of affairs. He blamed them on me. He had them because I wasn't living there because I knew better. The last time I did that, all hell broke loose and he fucked the neighbor. So what did it matter? Uh, I know this for a fact because she told me it's a story there. Just trust me, okay? And so um, any videos that you've seen in the past where I'm saying, my guy, my guy, it was that twat. And he's good for nothing. And... I'm so glad to be rid of him. It's like I have spent from October 2021 to October 2022 and just total gratitude for the absence that he's been in my life. And uh, 2022 went on. Um, I was extremely happy for um, December to come along because on the 22nd, I have been... Um, romance by another man who is uh, local to me and it's pretty sweet and I'm not going to kiss and tell at all <laughs> I will say uh, he makes me laugh and he's very sensuous and he likes the way my lips taste and he listens to me and we have conversations he has insight he tell he has intelligence um, and I like that he's not me that he doesn't have this emotionalism that I have or this sensitivity but he's more pragmatic uh, I, I have logical I'm logical but I tend to be fantastical in my thinking when it comes to partners so he I don't feel that way about him because I never picked him he picked me I didn't know it <laughs> And then he told me by kissing me and then I figured it out because we had gotten together and spoken and stuff and I I just was I, I was over my head I had I was clueless clueless Ding. so most popular video penis size that's so funny it's one of the most popular videos and another one of all of the videos it's about boomers it's like no we're not boomers I'm Jen Jones they moved the goalpost. They meaning the, um, the watchmen do it. The corporate, the people who own the, the press and all that. You know, the ones that run the way you think. And you think you're thinking <coughs> individually, but you're not. It's like listening to the news and parroting it and thinking that you're smart. I know so many people like that. Oh my God, my second husband. He would read the New Yorker. I left his ass after he became so smug and so full of himself and so condescending and so mean that he would barely get up from his New Yorker for me to have a 30 minute or even a five minute discussion with him before I went to work because he had already gone to work and back. He, he, um, did very well for himself being a Pepperidge Farm delivery guy. And he made a lot of money and all that. Um, and of course he mooched off of me and coerced me into signing off uh, everything to him. And I was under the spell because I was a traumatized child of a mother who told me everybody's needs are more important than mine. And I wasn't the center of the world and other people matter, Kathleen, you know, shit like that. So I'm here to tell you, oh, that's not true. You matter. You matter to you. And um, look at my narcissistic abuse videos. Just look for that word. You'll see it. Uh, there are quite a few of them in the 300s of views. I'm a small channel because I'm buried on not YouTube anymore. This is news tube. This is like every, like posh tube. Like everybody's got some sort of glitzy, shitsy going on tube. 
lube tube. <laughs> we wish, we wish it had something more exciting than what it has on it. And I'm not talking about sex. Talking about sex and sex are two different things, I tell you. And uh, my goodness, when I first started on this channel in 2014, I believe, look, just look at my very first one, look at the oldest, do that sort of uh, channel look. I'm talking about the nine considerations of love. I mean, I thought I had my shit together and I knew I didn't, which is why I was making videos because I needed self-reflection because the guy I was living with, my guy, was none other um, than a abusive guy back then who wouldn't listen to me. But it mirrored my childhood, so I got over it by creating a YouTube station to be able to talk to an audience and have some discussion about my ideas because he couldn't give a shit. All he wanted was pussy and he wanted to force himself on me. And at the time, that was good enough for me or maybe he like took his time a little bit or or no, none of the above. I was still traumatized, I'm telling you. Being raised by my mother, oh, I've got news for you on her, all right? Being raised by my mother did a number on my brain and I'm happy to say that I've come out of it, but I'm definitely preserving self and this new romance, um, which is blossoming. I, I feel strong desire for him physically, but I'm not gonna rush anything. And I'm not gonna kiss and tell. <laughs> No, no, no. Um, I won't. I promise. I won't. <laughs> Maybe just a little. Just a little. Just just the good stuff. Just the, like, hey, how was he? Uh, if you look at penis size, you're going to want to know what size he is. Okay, I hope he's not a bull, okay? <laughs> you, be you better not be a rabbit. And a rabbit is not just size, it's like going fast. So even though the second one was actually what they would call, um, is it a buck? Well, it's the middle one. Um, he, he fucked like a rabbit, meaning on, off, and off. So uh, the last sex we had was so bad, I wanted to remember it. I was like, yeah, this is so bad. And he jumped off, went into the shower, and I didn't even feel like pleasuring myself. I often would do that when you pulled shit like that. And I was like, he's fucking the bartender. Sure enough, I found cheap earrings, one under the bed and one someplace else flung, and somebody had lifted my fancy ones, aquamarine, cut natural stones, not those still, not those jewel ones that people get, they're all fancy. I got the kind you get from Sundance catalog. You know the catalog? It's a good one. Yeah, so he came back around, sniffing that around my patio, and I'm like, what are you doing here? And visiting a friend, I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. And uh, I don't see why we don't get to see each other anymore. We have a lot of years behind us, a lot of things we can talk about. I don't see why we should throw those years away. And I'm like, I do, because I'm happier without you. Bye. <laughs> uh, and I was like, every day. Okay, if you look at my video, uh, for single women over 50, you're better off. Well, uh, at least not trying to find a guy, but if divine intervention comes in and presents you with one, say yes. That's what happened to me on December 22nd, which is the winter solstice. So we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, every day without that man in it is like a party because I do not have anybody harassing me, waking me up giving me bad sex, demanding my attention, but not giving me any, being condescending towards me, lying to me about who I, uh, lying about me to his people, making his son hate me, and then they come and visit and everybody's mean to me. And I'm like, what the F? I can feel all this. I'm psychic. So I'm so glad he's over with, and he's not getting any pussy, at least not the quality he used to get. He's not getting my grade. And I don't care what HG Tudor says. H. G. Tudor is probably a wealthy man. This guy's a low life, ugly, and he smokes. I don't think his winky tank works anymore either. So therefore, I doubt very much he's going to get the class A woman that he had in me. And I don't feel like I'm one up in him on that. I just know it for a fact. And it's sort of like, see that motherfucker? See that? But I don't want him to see that. I, I, I just, I, I'm saying this for, um, 
like rhetorically, like, like, what do you call it? Like to be dramatic. <laughs> I don't have anything to prove to him. I will never see him again. And I'm all the more happy because of it. Drink to that. Now, my mother, the narcissist. Okay. Look at my videos dated about the time, August 22nd, 2022. I came back and somewhere in there, August, September, you'll see them. I was like raw, cold, a hard, open truth. So hurt, so vulnerable, so raw. It was hard to work. And uh, I just, I go, wow, so this is how come I suffered three insufferable partners. Thank God I had my children. And thank God the first for, gar, uh, narc was a garden variety who didn't really give a shit about me. Two months after I left, he had a woman in there with a baby from another man. And now he's with a woman who's like, how come you don't pay attention to me? It's like, because he's a narcissist woman. But I would never tell her that because she was always mean to me. And then she ostracized my son and my daughter in 2014. And she had them all moving with them. And then the child support I had only had for like five years total because I didn't actually um, present it until like two or three years into the divorce because I wanted him to get his feet down. But then he started uh, bossing me around with a new wench. And I was like, okay, we're going to show who's boss. We're going to do it with money. If you're, you're going to tell me what to do, then I'm, you're going to have to pay for it. So I made them pay. And of course, their money went to the kids and the kids' clothes and all that. And uh, I, um, in mean, hindsight, I could have managed it differently, but I was married. And at the time, I, I was going to stay married to the narcissist pepper farm truck driver who, who reads the New Yorker magazine. You interrupt him for 30 seconds and he looks up from it with a smug look on his face. And he says, I've heard any everything and anything you have to say, Kathleen. Is this anything new? And you're like, I uh, just wanted to talk to you before I went to work. He's like, okay, nothing. And up goes the magazine. And I was like, tick, tick, tick. The divorce is coming on. And I went to, out to Arizona. This was 2009. So my parents, I went to a bed and breakfast because I can't stay under the roof of my mother for very long without going insane because she will drive me that way. And then I... um Stayed at the bed and breakfast. I remember crying. I remember wanting to be loved. Like, why can't these men just love me? You know, why can't they love me? Well, they can't because they're narcissists. They just want you to love them. And they want control. Uh, they want your residual benefits. They want uh, supply from you. Or they want character traits. Those are the four things they want. And so I... Um, Oh, that, that pretty much I, after that, I came back and I was like, we're over and um, backed up and left. So we did that. But right, I was going something with this. Oh, the mother. OK, so the mother who I went to in 2009, who made that life nightmarish then and they had to go to a bed and breakfast just so I could handle visiting her. Went there in 2022. I stayed there for a night. Dad and I were having a a beer together. He's 92. She turned 87. My sister Corky had been there. She left and went back to Texas. By the way, Corky's a real biatch now. Um, I'll tell you why, but let's see if I can get it all in. So, um, uh, that makes me think. Uh, uh. So, um, yeah, my sister Corky, the golden child, her and my older sister, I'm going to tell you, let me, let me reel back, reel back, grab yourself a cup of cup, everybody. Let me tell you about the dysfunction of this family. We are the dysfunctional, narcissistic, pathologically mother, narcissistic family face with the traditional son, scapegoat, golden child, invisible child, then turns scapegoat. Me. And uh, I went there and... and my mother and father and I had a dinner and um, Corky was gone. It was just me, which is always dangerous territory. It's like treading on thin ice. And uh, everything was great. My father and I had a great time. I went to bed. Um, I woke up in the morning and she was raging and she was blaming me for breaking the hood and she was in my face. And then we sat down to breakfast. She asked me about my first husband. I say, I don't know. Why don't you ask him? I hear he's doing well. Ask me about my second husband. Moved to Florida. That's all I know. 
Asked me about my third relationship. Oh, that guy, the Virginia guy. I finally had to leave him. You know, the abuse got to be so much. Oh, Kathleen, he's not a bad man. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. So he's only uh, fucked me so hard that I've had black and blues in between my legs. I had deep vein thrombosis, which was pretty dangerous. Um, didn't give a shit about me. I didn't tell her any of this. I'm just like, okay, fine, fine. And it's like, are you going to ask about your daughter? You know, it's not all about you, Kathleen. That's my mother. Okay? It's a wonder I'm alive. So I um, then was given 20 questions, and I don't remember any of them because I started shaking, and I said, I am not able to tolerate you talking to me that television set that's the news station blaring like it's a horror film with what's going to happen next to Mame Who and the, the music alone is unsettling and I'm psychically sensitive. So it's like, I didn't say any of this to them. That's, that would just fall on, on deaf ears. So I'm just like, I can't do this. And, you can't do much of anything, Kathleen. It's like, I can do this. I can, I can tell you I can't do this and then I can leave. So I'm going to go do that. So I did. And, and then, um, you know, back in inside the house and talked to my dad on the side and then uh, came back in to say uh, bye to my mother one more time to say, Mom, I'm not leaving you forever. I'm leaving this house for now. I have to go. I can't stay here. And then she cocked her head and she goes, Are you all right in the head, Kathleen? <laughs> Boom. That was good, right? Mm. I wrote in my diary, because I kept it in my diary. I go, she asked me that because I think on a deep level, she knows she's not right in the head. That's what we get to. She wasn't. So she had a stroke. Um, uh, let's see. Three days before January 6th and has been bedridden and is has dementia so she's trying to pull these tubes out of her body what are putting which are feeding her heart with antibiotic that she got one of those itises in her um heart and the blood clots and all that are a possible cause of the itises and she's had four one two three four the last one was april 2022 so everyone's like, that's, that's correlation, not causation. Like, oh yeah, why don't you tell the doctor? At least maybe we can start looking. If you report it, maybe they can go, huh, maybe there's a commonality here. Maybe people who get this bloodborne disease, contagious bloodborne disease, where there's no non-cause or contagion, maybe it's actually inflicted from a bing, 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 bing. <laughs> right? It's like, ah. Uh, but instead, I have a family that's in denial. Okay, so she has to be sedated so she doesn't have to pull these things out. And she can get the proper dose in. So then once she's stabilized and that infection has been abated and takes many weeks, she can be moved to a hospital closer to my dad, who was 50 miles up from her because she had to be moved to a facility that could accommodate her needs. Well, my sister, who's a nurse and very stupid at it and couldn't get a job and kept getting fired, and my sister Corgi, who's the golden child, who turns out as materialistic biatch, swoop in, clean up the refrigerator, and as payment, my mother, you know, she's going to give away her car. Jan takes it, fills it up with loot. Who knows what? Hopefully she didn't take my mother's jewelry. And she probably did, because she's a dragon. And she does. She's a reptile. When she was mad at me once, her eyes went like this. And I was like, whoa, you're a reptilian. She is. She's evil. She is. I won't have anything to do with her. I wrote her off. And uh, my sister Corky, uh, I think, is has been overtaken by something. Um, and I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on? And they're like, well, we're going to sell the house. I go, well, I'm going to be there February 8th through the 20th. Why don't you guarantee it's still going to be there? We can't do that. You know, I'm like, oh. And they're like, Dad can't do this. Dad can't do that. Well, we can get temporary care. I'm going to be there. I want to spend time with my dad in the family home. Why don't you get here sooner, she says. I'm like, because I have to work for a living, unlike yourself, who works for fun, who lives in a practically $100 million home, okay? I work for a living. 
I could only clear my calendar. This is the family, the dysfunctional family. And the golden child, who I kept defending and actually said nice things about and even like pumped up her ego, didn't need to be pumped up. She is drunk with power. And she is full of herself and shit. And um, she is a classic golden child turned narcissist bitch. And I never saw it because of my fantastical thinking. Yeah. So I'm starting to see the bullshit a lot more now that I turned six zero. And for my birthday, I got the, 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 it was a strain. That's right. I got a strain. So I got a new strain, everybody. And it was awful, but I didn't take any drugs. I just took um, this. And then my son sent me some homeopathy. I'm not going to get up and, and show it. Just believe me. And um, he sent me a homeopathy. Both my son and my daughter sent me care packages so I could have food. Because the last thing I was going to do was go into a grocery store when my head felt like it was going to split open and ooze all over the floor. It hurt like the dickens. Plus, you're tired. All they wanted to do was go back to sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's like, what am I going to do with that? Okay, so... So then I, I, I call my dad. I want to know the skinny from him because my sisters are dominating. I find out Jan just left with loot. I'm like, good. Opportunity knocks because if Jan and Corky are there at the same time, I'm in trouble deep. So the greed bitch is gone and she's uh, off she goes with her fake tits. And um, and then she um, uh, has whatever she has. And Corky's already, oh, I get all the silver. I go, Corky, I just want, I just want please. Mom said we could talk about it and split things. I want two play settings. There's six. I want all the silver. And yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a woman who lives in a fucking mansion. I'm like, okay, okay. It's materialism. I let it go. You see it into in you. They do the honorable thing. I didn't say this to her because she's deaf to, to kindness. She's deaf to reason. She's deaf to rationale. And her head's so big and up her ass, she can't see either. So. So I was just like, okay, whatever, whatever the unit, it's okay. It's all material wealth. Um, I want to do what I can, even though my mom and I did not get along very well. I still have feelings for her and how uh, she did bring life to me. Did you guys massage your feet? Have you been helping her feel her nerve endings? No, she needs, she needs hospice. I go, like, She's been drugged so that she wouldn't pull the carthers out. She has dementia. They have to keep her sedated. She doesn't need hospice. She does need full-time care because she can't yet get up and do her own business because she's going through the drug um, from having had the itis thing, whatever is in the heart, with a bing, 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 bing. <laughs> or bing. Futu, 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 futu. That thing. So they all had been trying to get me to take it. I'm like, I'd rather have whatever's going around. And wouldn't you know it? I didn't get it until my birthday, <laughs> 2023. And it lasted three days. And I cleared my calendar so that I wouldn't have a, a possible exposure to anybody else following protocol, being a doobie, being responsible, because that's what I do. And I'm working with the public right? So it's like you follow protocol, man. And, and so then my sister has the audacity to say, well, we can't guarantee that. So I try to talk to my father and she's back there in the background. Then I go, tell Corky, tell dad, please tell her to stop talking while you're talking to me. And she wouldn't. I was like, shut up. And she heard me. And it was like, I finally had to say, fuck off. And he laughed. <laughs> I'll continue with that saga later. But let's just say I have uh, to visit them. I am not interested in looting their house. Um, I will give my mother a foot massage. I don't care how mean and ugly she was to me. She's now a little girl and an aging body. She's not going to be that ma sassy, uh, mean person. She's dependent now. She needs residual benefits. And I will give her the kindness that I have. From my heart but both my sisters were ready to stick dad in a, a, a nursing home and her and another one and 
They'd be on different floors. And I was like, let dad stay in the home a little longer, just a little longer. And he does need help with grocery delivery and things like that. But Eddie wanted to make that, they wanted to make that the thing. I go, he's got neighbors. They can watch after him until February 8th. In fact, I'm going to get their numbers. Oh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask the neighbors. All right. Thanks, everybody. See that? I'm glad I had this audience. Even if you're not listening to me in the moment. I, pick, I feel you. <laughs> I'll tell you more later. Much love.